Hello and welcome to Iskaria.com. My name is Dr. Heather Ali. With Iskaria.com, you can enjoy medical lectures anywhere at any time. Today, I'm going to talk about a very, very important, very, very interesting, and very, very common complaint that is shortness of breath in adults. While working in an emergency department, you come across this important symptom and, and uh, complain very often. In this lecture, as you see, this is part one, we'll try, we'll try to explain and talk about how to approach a patient with shortness of breath. While what some specific diseases would be taught or will be talked about in the next lecture, that's part two of it. Let's run the timeline. So, we'll talk about what shortness of breath is, what terms do we use in emergency or in medical language what shortness of, about the shortness of breath, that's dyspnea. How would a patient convey or communicate with you that this patient is having dyspnea? Next, we talk about some of the anatomy of the respiratory system, which includes the nasal passages, the trachea and the lungs. We'll talk about some of the receptors, the mechanical receptors that are present on the lungs muscles and the chemical receptors which detect the changes in partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide inside the body. We'll talk about the position of these chemo chemoreceptors in the body. Next, we'll talk about some of the important and most common red flag signs. What signs and symptoms could be present in a patient with specific diseases? Or what signs and symptoms would give you a, a, a clue what this patient is going through? For example, as you can see in this slide, altered mental state is a sign of hypoxia. Likewise, there are multiple uh, multiple things, multiple symptoms the patient can tell you and help, and this can help you to identify if this patient is going into impending respiratory failure or this patient is stable enough to be proceeded further for history and examination. We'll talk about what red flag signs are and what should be done even if uh, as an emergency physician you don't know the history or the diagnosis of this patient. What to do first is oxygen and oxygen. Then a, a detailed history, a detailed questions, what should be asked to the, from the patient about the disease. There are multiple questions which can help you to taper down or to narrow down your differential diagnosis as what might be the cause of shortness of breath in these patients. Next, we'll talk about some of the examination findings and the patient presenting to you with shortness of breath. For example, fever, the oxygen levels, this, uh, the foreign body ingestion, uh, strider, inspiratory strider, muscle retractions, signs which includes, which can help you or which can tell you if this patient can go into respiratory failure within no time if not treated. What are the differential diagnoses and what are the examination findings related to those differential diagnoses would be taught in this slide. Next, some diagnostic studies, diagnostic testing, which includes arterial blood gases, uh, D-dimers from radiological studies to, uh, to blood, from blood studies to the radiological studies that are required to help or to make the diagnosis in a patient or what might be the cause of shortness of breath in this patient. X-ray, simple chest X-ray could give you a lot of information. We'll talk about how we do a patient with fluid overload at this, that is congestive heart failure look like and how do an X-ray of a pneumothorax look like. The significance of ECG would be taught. What signs and symptoms should be in your mind well, uh, uh, when you receive a patient with shortness of breath, what with signs and symptoms the patient is presenting with, uh, for example, a chest pain, ECG could help you to differentiate if this patient is going through an MI or an unstable angina 
or any dysrhythmias or ventricular fibrillation or any uh, rhythm abnormalities. And then in the last part, we'll talk about the CT scan. We'll show you the CT scan of a pulmonary embolism and we'll talk about what pulmonary embolism is. With scada.com, you can enjoy thousands of lectures from home anywhere and anytime. You can enjoy lectures, more lectures in emergency medicine at scada.com and other medical courses, in, for example, in anatomy, physiology, and other basic sciences lectures are available on scada.com. Start your free trial today. Thank you for watching scada.com.